to SeaWorld Go Show Live. For free tickets, visit SeaWorldGhost.com or call 1-877-74-STEVE. You know what? You, you, got, you got an opportunity right now. You really do. You got parents that care about you and give a damn, and they're here. And they're saying they're there to support you. And your mother's helping you with your children. So you have something that most young women your age don't have. You got two parents, and they give a damn about you. Sure, they made mistakes, but they're, they're still here. And you have an opportunity to at least do something with life. What I told you earlier is the truth. If you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to have a really hard life. I'm sure it's hard right now. 17, trying to raise two kids, not having any kind of stable man in your life, no man that's going to do anything for you. Are you really going to go home and change? Or are you going to go back and be with Malcolm? Let's play the door game, okay? I love the door game. That door is Malcolm. You can be with him and and, and, and go keep dating him and hope things work out. Or you can walk out that door with your parents and we'll give you parenting classes and help you get back in school. But I'll tell you this, the moment that Roy picks up the phone and tells me that you're dating Malcolm or you're hanging out or you're going to a party, then, then that's where my effort stops. Then I'll stop the classes. I'll stop the counseling. I'll stop everything. Because I want to see the commitment that I'm making you. I want you to make that same commitment to your children. So this is the end of the show. It's pick a door time. You go out that way and you keep going, be with Malcolm, whatever. Or you go out that door with your parents and you get the help, parenting classes, and try to be a good mother to your kids. So you just, you'll close the show by whatever decision you make, by whichever door you go out. with his 17-year-old daughter, Sylvia. Welcome, Chris, to the show now. So, Chris, my business just told me that you feel for my help because your daughter moved out, and she's only 17 years old. When did she move out? Uh, this past May. Okay. And what was her reasoning for moving out, in your opinion? Uh, my thoughts that um, she had a really rough semester in school, and um, I've always been very performance-based. And she knew there was going to be repercussions. She was going to lose some, some freedoms over the summer. Um, she wasn't willing to do that. So what were the issues that you have been working on with her for the past two and a half years, as you said? Uh, her mother and I separated, but we also knew there's a lot going on. Uh, she came out to me as trans. Okay. And that's what a lot of this was stemming from, was like gender dysphoria. Was it a challenge for you to see her going through that change? It was the biggest challenge I've ever faced in my life, I think. Okay. And how were you able to support her when she said, I'm trans? I told her straight up, whatever you need from me, I'm willing to give you what you need from me. How can I help? Since then, you've done the work. I've 
try to do the work. When she changed her name, was that a hard moment for you? That was the hardest moment. I, it's funny when you look back after all this time, and I think about the only thing that really I just could not wrap my head around. Well, I came up with a name, Lucius. I just thought it was a fantastic name. And, yeah. and when she changed the name, I didn't realize I had such emotional uh, attachment to it. How are you bonding now with her? Now it's through music. Okay. She's a musician, and uh, I built a shop in my backyard and closed in a section of it for the band, her band to come and play music. Good job, Dad. Well, cover. Many people say, well, maybe figure out how to bond and then let them build a shed for it so that you can have your friends over. Like, that's a step be above and beyond, and I want to acknowledge that. I appreciate you doing that. What do you miss most about Sylvia living with you? We hung out. We did things. We had drums set up in the living room. I mean, going on road trips and doing mountain hikes and things like that. That's what I miss the most. What would it mean to you to have your daughter come home? It would mean the world to me. But at the same time, what's more important is that she's focused and working hard to make sure she has success. She's going to need to be sustainable. All right. Maybe there's something you'll learn today. Please, everyone, welcome Sylvia to the show. <laughs> It was at the start of the summer. There's always this kind of limiting thing throughout the entirety of the school year where if I didn't perform to a certain uh, level, a lot of my, um, not only rights, but I guess privileges would be stripped. I think it's kind of filled with anxiety. Um, so I got into my car, turned off all my locational services, and drove to a friend's house. But why do you have to turn off your location services? Because there was this kind of anxiety that she would find me. Did your father find you? Yeah, I didn't want to come back until I was ready. So let me, let me get this straight, because I want to clear this story. So you're in school, you're not performing the way you're supposed to. Yes. So dad would have said you can't be in the band and do all these things. Can't be in the band. Because you didn't make the grades or you didn't yeah. do the thing. Okay. Um, I didn't really perceive as fair. What were the restrictions he put on you exactly? Um, there were a handful of things. So you're sticking with your phone? Yeah. Phone, okay. Most, like, electronic devices... But the one that were really big for me is that he would restrict my um, social like time. Like, I wouldn't be able to have use of my car, things like that. Do you feel like you're honest be, your father's being honest about the way he feels about you? I would say he's at least mostly honest with it. <laughs> what do you think about that? She, she thinks that you're only mostly honest about what you're feeling. Well, I'm absolutely honest about how I'm feeling, but I understand her perspective on things for sure. Got it. Are you afraid to fail your father? Oh, yeah. Through the entirety of my life, that's been kind of a backlying anxiety that I've had and that's the reason that I left is because I wanted to prove to him that I can do this on my, by myself do you think you're just rebelling you're 17 years old I'm listening to everything you're saying and you're like I didn't do well in school so my dad took away my phone he's gonna take away my car he's gonna take away my, my band I'm wondering was that just rebellious behavior I feel like this is more of the basis of I feel like I needed to I had something that I needed to prove to him but you have a supportive dad who I loves do. you and is trying to be there for you. But he can't hit every mark. Do you think you're hurting him by not being at home? Yeah, I do. Is, is your daughter hurting you by not being home? Absolutely. Talk to her? Absolutely. It, and that is something you know, I can't push back, Mother. You've done so well since you've been out on your own. It's And it's, it pains me to say it and admit it, but if you're doing this well, maybe it's better if you don't come back. And that just destroys me. I'm going to be honest with you. I think you're a rebellious team. That's what it is. I think you're a rebellious thing. I understand about right now you're in a, a very vulnerable place, especially as transitioning. Yeah. Finding your social group is a very important time of a teen's life. But I believe some of the other actions were very much rebellious. Like, I'm going to talk my location. I'm going to, like, not, you know, be there. Those things of nature. Can you admit that's rebellious in some degree? I could see that to a certain degree. <laughs> but at the same time... In my perception, that was all based off of anxiety. I get it. I'm not going to take away from your anxiety. Yeah. But it's still being rebellious in a sense. Because you have a father here who I'm sure made some mistakes, but is trying and loved you. But this goes back to the way that you communicate. The way that your child is telling you is that they're afraid to fail you. When you say, is it hurting you that your child's not home? You're like, yeah, but it is hurting me. But you know what? If you're doing better on your own, more practical, practical, practical. Tell your daughter why you need her home. I need you home because you're part of me. And not having you there. It's like part of me's not there. It doesn't matter what you do in life, and you, you're not a failure to me ever. At the end of the day, no matter how strong your daughter is, she still needs her daddy. That's what I think. I agree. Yeah. You need your father? Oh, yeah. Can you tell him I need you? I need you now. Give your dad a hug.
<laughs> I think just practice more of this vulnerability and you two will be okay. <laughs> Seriously, and then you gotta stop rebelling as well. start to see how this is affecting you so right now i'm still on the fence i'm right there in the middle i don't even like being touched you know i don't like being I know. touched and I'm, that, that's why i'm here so we can get this truth out so we can figure out what happened and no matter you know what, what happened i know you know what happened <laughs> what what service were you in um i was in the army for four years four years so thanks for serving um so you know, you know my background. I was in the Marines for six years, and uh, I was a policeman in Chicago for twelve years. And my father was a policeman for thirty years. So I'm very pro police. But police sometimes either make mistakes, like every profession in the world. But sometimes when you're a police, it gets magnified more because you know sometimes it's life and death and whatever. Other than that, what the story that she tells you. Do you find her to be a truthful person? Through all the time that I've known her? Yeah. Yes. Of yeah. course. Of course. A year and a half, she's always been there for me. And I've helped her through things. She's helped me through things. All right. If she passes her lie detector test, how is that going to affect you? Um, well, first of all, I'm going to admit that I was wrong. That's going to be the very first thing I do. And as soon as possible, I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that our or that her situation gets dealt with properly. Because I'm her best friend. I'm going to be there for her no matter what. Crystal came here because she was abused, as she says, from 9 to 15. Nobody believes her. She takes a lie detector test. And we ask her, are you telling the truth that your mother's ex-friend sexually molested you when you were between the ages of 9 and 14? She answered yes. Are you telling the truth that your mother's ex-friend attempted to rape you on multiple occasions when you were between the ages of 9 and 14? She answered yes. Did you lie to the police during their investigation in February of 2018. She answered no. The results came back all the same. And they came back that Crystal told the truth. limitations and all that i would hope at uh some point the police might look back into this matter and look at that again and maybe bring justice for you uh i would certainly hope when you go home that you let i want to know how your mom reacts to this oh my god I'm I'm to the pictures. oh my god yeah. you have no idea i'm like freaking told you mom yeah. I've been held down and I've been I hated myself for the way that I was because of what she did to me and when it finally comes out I'm like finally someone is finally listening to me someone has the reason to listen to me yeah. I told you you know I'm not I'm not gonna beat you up you're a young guy 
and as young men, we need to learn lessons. And this is a big lesson for you to learn. Maybe when they're your friend and they have your back, you need to have those back. I agree. Yeah. And, and like I said, a lot of times this happened and, and people don't want to believe or they refuse to believe. Uh, you know, whatever your mother's reasons were, I, I am glad that you got back to a good point with your mother and maybe this even helps even more i believe it's going to bring us more closer than we ever were well i'm glad and i'm just i'm really proud of you for that <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and YouTube for more Mari, more outrageous footage, more original content, and more ways to interact with me and my guests. Watch, like, share, and repeat. for appearing today. I want to thank everybody who watches the Mari Show every day. I want to thank my live studio audience. You are the best. Thank you. Until next time, America. Thank you.